Tonight, we are finally taking the Tesla to the Dramana drive-in. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through what our experience was like taking the Tesla to the drive-in movies and why it actually might be better taking an EV over a petrol car. Give us directions to Dramana 3 drive-in. I'm also going to run you through all the settings you'll need to change if you were to take your Model 3 to the movies. Better get some supplies. Be back. Alright, so first things first is you'll need to actually tune in to the theatre's radio station so you get sound coming from the movie into the car. And it's relatively easy to do, I mean all you need to do is tap on the radio app and then click on direct tune, punch in the number, hit go cool. and it's that easy. There has been a lot of confusion as to if Teslas have AM and FM radio. This is something we had to do some research on before we went to the movies because we weren't sure whether our Model 3 even had a radio. We'd never used it. We always just use our phones when we get into the car and play music and podcasts that way. It seems like most of the Teslas around the world now have FM radio as standard. There was a period where you had to pay for it, then they took it away, and now it looks like it's back again. Although AM radio does not appear to be a thing in Teslas. The second thing which you want to do when you arrive at the movies is to jump into your display settings and turn the brightness right down to zero and also switch off auto brightness so it doesn't suddenly turn back up during the movie. And then next, the most important setting to turn on is camp mode and you access this via your air conditioning settings. Tapping on camp mode will prevent the car from falling asleep after 30 minutes into the movie. It does mean, unfortunately, that you need to have the AC running, so we just set that to the lowest fan speed and put it at a comfortable temperature so it wasn't an issue for us at all. Also keep in mind that camp mode does turn off after the battery does get to 20%, so it's good to make sure you have enough charge. But while we're talking about the battery, we pulled in to the drive-in at 46%, and it only seemed to use about 4% of the battery during the movie, which is pretty impressive. Next, you're gonna to need to make sure that your headlights are turned off. So jumping into the settings, going from auto to completely off. Also, when we were coming in and out of the drive-in, we needed to make sure we just had our Parker's lights on and not our full headlights. And then lastly, a good little addition to your setup before the movie begins, turn on screen clean mode, and that will just make sure your display is the darkest it can possibly be. It does turn off after 30 minutes and go back into that camping mode screen, which is actually a beautiful animation. Next step might even be that Tesla adds a drive-in movie mode. Who knows? I guess there's probably not that many drive-ins left in the world. Now let's talk about some of the benefits of taking a Tesla over a petrol car. The sound system is amazing. <laughs> Being able to watch a movie with this sort of sound system was incredible. That being said, it's still an FM station, so the quality is never going to be perfect. The other thing that was great was having the option of heating and cooling the car however you like without worrying about the battery going flat. The visibility you get from that front windscreen is amazing. It would be even more amazing in a Model X. When it comes to the seats, they were super comfortable. Obviously, you can recline them all the way back, which makes it perfect for watching a drive-in movie. <laughs> it's like being in gold class. Nice. Look at this. <laughs> The interior lights are nice and bright. Our Mazda pales in comparison. Having the white interior probably helps a little bit to spread that light around the cabin too. And if you're wondering about jumping in the back and watching the movie lying down, you can almost get away with it in the Model 3 thanks to this massive sunroof, but the visibility is not gonna be great. Also, if you find that you have a flat battery, we can start you at the end of the show with our protected jump pack. 
So overall, what was our experience like? Well, we certainly had lots of fun. It was very memorable. But as Nick pointed out on my community page, why even go to the drive-in when you have this massive infotainment screen in the car, which is a very fair point. The actual picture quality of the drive-in screen was not perfect. We saw Batman, which had a lot of darkly lit scenes, which made it a little bit hard to see at times. So I'd recommend seeing Batman at a proper cinema. The drive-in didn't do it justice. I feel like we're in the Batmobile. <laughs> But we are planning to go back to the drive-in theater sometime soon, see a lighter family style of film, especially once daylight savings ends here in Victoria because we were starting to fall asleep towards that 11 p.m. mark. Batman is a three hour movie, but if you own a Tesla and there's a drive-in near you, it's definitely worth going just for the experience. Also, Batman really does need to get himself a matte black Model S plaid. Anyway, I hope you found this video somewhat useful. It took me hours to edit, so leave me a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.